This here's the Yukon Trail, another exciting product from Mech. July 1897, the United States Howdy, stranger. You'll be needing a ticket to board any of these ships to Alaska. If I were you, I'd book first-class passage to Dai. Why, Dai is the gateway to the Klondike. It sits on the southern coast of Alaska Territory. Prettiest little town you ever did see. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City and Gold Country. From Dai, you take the scenic Chilkoot Trail, the shortest route over the coastal mountains. On the other side, you'll launch a boat from Lake LaBerge and float down the Yukon River straight into Dawson. Of course, I recommend it highly. There's no sense lugging everything from Seattle on up to Alaska. My pleasure. Remember, Dai is the place to be. Well, you could go to Skagway, which is just a stone's throw from Dai, but that town's nothing but a hangout for hooligans and con artists. There's a ticket office just up the street. Just tell the clerk that you want to go to Dai. Hello, friend. I'll bet you're a stampeder. The best way to start your journey is to board a ship to Skagway. Skagway is the premier port in southern Alaska. It's the best jumping off point to the Yukon gold fields. From there, it's an easy hike and boat ride to Dawson City. From Skagway, you take the White Pass Trail through the mountains. It's not the shortest route, but it's the easiest. Once you're through the mountains, you just take a boat from Lake LaBerge down the Yukon River to Dawson. Naturally, the fine citizens of Skagway are dedicated to serving the needs of Stampeders such as yourself. You can buy whatever you need at very reasonable prices. You're welcome. Remember, Skagway is the best way. Your only other choice is Dai, but that's just a backward little outpost with nothing going for it. Skagway is where the action is. There's a ticket office downtown. Remember, be sure to book passage on a ship that's going to Skagway. Shop now or be sorry later. Get all your Klondike supplies at Pioneer Outfitters. It's on the Main Street downtown. You can't miss it. We're open until 9 o'clock tonight. Don't get excited and rush away unprepared. You're going to a country where grub is more valuable than gold and frequently can't be bought for any price. We can fit you out quicker and better than any store in or out of the Klondike. Greetings, stranger. Welcome to Seattle. My name is Clarence Berry. My wife and I have just returned from the Yukon with more than $100,000 in gold. We just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was tending bar up in 40 Mile. One day an Austrian by the name of Anton Stander came in. Stander said he'd found a good claim, but he was flat broke and needed supplies. I gave him some money and half of a claim of my own in exchange for half of his claim. In just one winter of hard work, I took $140,000 in gold out of that claim. Thank you. Well, I suppose there's two things you should know. 
First off, when we left Dawson, there was hardly any food up there. If I were you, I'd plan on hauling in an outfit that would last you at least a year. You must expect to be disappointed. You may prospect for years and never find a paying claim. Then again, you just may be lucky enough to strike it rich. If I were you, I'd buy it in Seattle. Things are cheaper here, plus you never know what you'll be able to find up north. You must expect... If I were you... You're welcome. Hello, it's nice to make your acquaintance. I'm Ethel Berry, Clarence's wife. Thanks to our luck in the Yukon, we are probably the two wealthiest people in Seattle. The first thing we're going to do is buy me a diamond wedding ring. We were very poor when we married. We had money for a trip to Alaska or a wedding ring, but not both. Luckily, we decided to go to Alaska. Well, before we struck it rich, Clarence worked for long hours and short pay on a fruit farm in Fresno, California. I think we might go back and buy that farm. I would say the most important thing is to find yourself a good partner. I don't think either Clarence or I could have made it alone. Hello there. You must be another one of those stampeders. Well, in case you haven't noticed, the whole U.S. economy has been in a depression for some time now. People have hardly any money, and what little they do have, they've been squirreling away. That plus the prospect of adventure. Nobody's stopping to think that they don't know anything about gold mining, or that they're leaving their jobs and families behind. Everybody's got visions, or delusions, of striking the rich. It's been mass hysteria ever since news about the Klondike hit town. It seems like most every Seattle resident has the fever. Folks are leaving town as fast as they can. We've got nobody to run the streetcars. I haven't seen a policeman in days. The newspaper's losing its reporters. Even the mayor up and quit. Seems like the only people left in Seattle are the shopkeepers who are selling outfits to Sam Peters. It's been mass. Hello there. Headed to the Yukon? You appear to be alone. The only kind of outfit I sell is made for two people traveling together. You should get yourself a partner. From everything I've heard, the Yukon can be a pretty rough place. One person all alone wouldn't stand much of a chance. If I were you, I'd check the ticket office. That's where most of the unattached folks seem to hang out. An outfit is a collection of all the supplies you'll need to make it to Dawson City and do some gold mining. stranger. Folks call me Sadie. You look like you could use a partner. One who knows a thing or two about gold mining. You ever done any gold mining? I didn't think so. It's lonely, backbreaking work. You wouldn't last a week without a partner. Are you kidding? I'm the best gold during gold miner in the world. I struck it rich a few years back in Colorado. Run into some bad luck, though. Lost it all in a poker game. That's why I'm heading up to the Klondike. Getting to the Klondike is easy, but you'll be needing my help to find the gold. I'm willing to split our expenses and our gold right down the middle. I got $500 cash to throw in with your stash.
Hello, my name is difficult for outsiders to pronounce. You may call me Linda. I was born and raised in the area where you want to go. I can lead you to the place where gold can be found. In my native language, you would be called a chichaco, a tenderfoot. Life in the north is much different from what you are used to. Without me to guide you, your feet will become very sore. You must get to the gold fields as quickly as possible. I can carry more supplies and cover more ground than outsiders. A miner who struck it rich hired me to help carry his gold from the Yukon back to the outside. I was paid $500. Now I would like to go back and find some gold myself. How do? The name's Jake. If you're looking for a partner, I'm your man. I'm a master carpenter, and I'm itching to go get me a big pile of gold. I was thinking that myself, but I changed my mind. From what I hear, life in the Yukon's a lot easier if you've got someone to share the chores and the expenses. Once we get to the Yukon, we might need to build all sorts of things. A cabin, mining equipment, a boat. Building stuff is my specialty. I've got $500 to buy supplies and such. We can split everything 50-50. I'm also strong as an ox. I can haul as much gear as two normal men. How do you do? My name is Midas T. Golden. Might you be seeking a partner? Yes, that was my original plan as well. However, several people have advised me that it would be unwise to travel alone in the Yukon. Something about inclement weather, I gather. Yes, that was... I am a well-to-do businessman, and I am willing to share my money with you. It takes money to make money. With my bankroll, we'll be able to buy whatever we need. And we will most certainly strike it rich. Hello! I noticed that you don't have a partner. You'll definitely want to get one before you buy your tickets. Getting to the Yukon is too difficult for an inexperienced person all alone. You'll be much better off with someone to share the load. Getting to the other folks here in the ticket office are all looking for a partner. From what I've heard, there are four qualities that will increase your chances of striking it rich. First, of course, it's good to know something about gold mining. Next, you'll need plenty of money. Things are very expensive up there. Well, I've heard that there's a lot of hard work involved. You've got to haul a ton of supplies over long distances. And it helps if you're handy with tools, because what you can't buy, you have to build yourself. Still looking for a partner? Like I said before, I'm your man. You couldn't do better than to throw in with a carpenter like me. Glad to hear it. Here, I'll let you hold my cash. Why don't you go get us some tickets? Hello! I noticed that you don't have a partner. You'll definitely want to get one before you buy your tickets. I see you found yourself a partner now. Certainly. How can I help you?
what else would you like to know? To tell you the truth, I don't think it makes much difference. The two towns are just a few miles apart. I suppose it just depends on which ship you want. The most expensive ships are the most seaworthy, they have the best captains, and they're ready to depart later today. The medium price ships are reliable, and they'll be sailing in a week or so. The low-cost ships are coming out of retirement, so to speak. They're getting some repairs and won't be ready for a couple of weeks. You're welcome. Where would you like to go? What is it, partner? I didn't know we had a choice. Let's go to the one that will get us to gold country the fastest. On the one hand, I'd like to save as much money as we can. On the other hand, I worry that a cheap ship might be unsafe. I'll let you decide. So, which ship would you like? The Alliance costs $40 per person. The Yosemite is $30 and the Eliza Anderson is $20. Certainly, that will be $80 for you and your partner. Have a safe journey. Good day to you. I'm so... How nice to see you again. You have decided to make a purchase, I assume. I'm selling some items that you will find very useful or valuable up in the Yukon. Today I have a crate of eggs and I have a pair of gold sniffing gophers. Folks up in the gold country have plenty of beans and flour and so on, but they're starving for some good fresh eggs. I'll sell you this crate for only $10. I'm sure you can resell them for at least five times that amount. Sounds like a good idea to me. So, would you like to get the eggs? Thank you. Now, are you interested in my other item? Normally, it takes weeks of back-breaking work to dig down to where the goal might be, and you never know if you're digging in the right place. These are specially trained gophers. They have a nose for gold. All you have to do is set them loose, and they'll start digging directly above any spot where gold is buried. Guaranteed! They only cost $10. It sounds too good to be true. But if it is true, it would save us a lot of work. So, would you like to get the gophers? Thanks anyway. Well, that's all I have to offer. Hello! I see you've picked up a partner. Are you ready to depart? Two on the Alliance side. It's ready to sail. Step right aboard. I see you found yourself a partner now. Which ship would you like? The Al Key costs forty dollars per person. The Rosalie is $30, and the Willamette is $20. Certainly, that will be $80 for you and your partner. Have a safe journey. Hello again. I see you found a partner. What can I do for you? Of course. What would you like? It's a big saw. It takes two people to operate. You and your partner can use it to saw a tree trunk into boards. It costs eight dollars. Certainly. Anything else? It's for hauling supplies. You do get one sled when you buy an outfit. But since you have a partner, it's a good idea for each of you to have a sled. It costs forty dollars. Certainly. Anything else? Yes, an outfit has everything that you and your partner will need. It has cooking supplies, mining supplies, cold weather clothing, a sled, and a supply of food. There's a hatchet, a hammer and nails, some rope. There are mining supplies, of course, a gold pan, two shovels, a pick, 
and there's a sled for hauling everything over the trail. There's heavy underwear, wool socks, six pairs of mittens, two pairs of shoes and boots, not to mention a tent and some warm blankets. You got your basics. Flour and yeast for making bread, cornmeal, oatmeal, rice, beans, bacon, sugar, salt. There's dried fruits and vegetables so they're not so heavy to haul over the mountains. And there's plenty of coffee and tea. You're welcome. So would you like to buy an outfit? You have three choices. The outfit with 800 pounds of food costs $320. The one with 1,600 pounds is $370. And the one with 2,400 pounds is $420. Certainly. Anything else? Good day to you. Heading to the Yukon? I have some things for sale that will be of great interest to you. I'm selling some items. Excellent. Thank you. Now, are you interested in my other item? Are you ready to depart now? Two on the Alki, I see. It's ready to sail. Step right aboard. This is one nasty storm. I hope the ship holds up. We bumped into that outcropping of rocks. Luckily, it looks like there's no damage done. Our ship hit that big iceberg. Luckily, I think the iceberg got the worst of that encounter. So, this is Skagway. Hello, stranger. Is there something I can do for you? Oh, really? What do you have? Eggs are hard to find up here. It's a deal. Folks will be glad to have eggs. Can I do anything else for you? Of course. What would you like? Certainly. I sell food in 400-pound packages for $40 a piece. Each person needs about 100 pounds of food per month. The Canadian government will require 1,000 pounds per person when you pass Canadian customs. Certainly. That will be $160. Another Stampeder. What do you want? I'm called William Moore. I set up this town back in 1888 to take advantage of the White Pass Trail. Now all these newcomers are taking over. I've been looking for gold all my life. Been to California, Peru, you name it. 
struck it rich more than once. My sons were up here looking for gold in the Yukon. Not exactly, but they told me about a rumor of a hidden mountain pass into the Yukon. I came up to see for myself. I had a hunch that there would be a big strike, and I figured I could build a railroad through the pass. Well, you're looking at maybe the first white man to cross it. Back in 1887, an Indian, name of Skookum Jim, and I surveyed the whole trail. I named it after Sir Thomas White, the Canadian Minister of the Interior. Well, it's named for an Indian word that means the home of the North Wind. I've never seen a more beautiful place in all my life. I set up a trading post here in 88 and just been waiting for the gold rush to begin. As a matter of fact, I ain't a bit happy. These stampeders just came in and acted like they owned the place. The worst of the lot is that scoundrel Soapy Smith. They even told me I gotta move my house to make way for a road. I'll go to court to prove that this land is mine. Meantime, I still got a plan to strike it rich. I'm building the pier. Everybody will have to pay me to use it. If I were you, I'd get up there as fast as you can. There was already a bunch of sourdoughs in the Klondike when the gold was discovered, and there's thousands of stampeders on their way now. Hello. I suppose you're looking for someone to haul your supplies. Sorry, I can't help you. I'm Harriet Pullen. I arrived in Skagway a short time ago with $7 to my name. Now I'm making a good living by hauling supplies over the White Pass Trail. Some folks do, but it's awfully hard work. If you have the money, it's much easier to hire someone like me with a team of horses. Well, it's a little longer than the Chilcut Trail out of Dai, but it's not so steep. Lots of people and pack animals have been traveling over the White Pass and it's starting to get pretty muddy. I've decided to seek my fortune here in Skagway. If you're going to the Yukon, about all I can say is good luck. Hello, friend. Can I interest you in a simple game of Find the Nugget? I've got three cups and one gold nugget. See? I put the nugget under one of the cups, then I move the cups around. When I stop, you tell me which cup is hiding the nugget. I'm willing to bet you can't do it. If you guess right, you win the bet. Would you like to give it a try? That's the spirit. How much would you like to bet? Five dollars it is. Let me know when you're ready. Nah, I'm afraid you missed it this time. Would you like to try again? Good day. Welcome to the Skagway Photograph Studio. We have pictures from all along the Yukon Trail. Feel free to look around.
Hello, friend. I'm an adventurer. I travel the world in search of excitement. Yeah, the lore of gold, of course. Just like most everyone here, I'm on my way to a Yukon. I have stumbled upon a few tough corners of the globe during my wanderings beyond the outpost of civilization. But the most outrageously lawless place I have ever seen is Skyway. Uh, it seems as if the scum of the earth has come here to rob and murder. There's no law whatsoever. Might is right. Only the most well-armed and cautious are immune to danger. Leave Skagway as soon as you can, before Soapy Smith and his gang relieve you of everything you own, including your life. Welcome to Skagway, my friend. If there's anything you need, you just come to me. I'm Jefferson Randolph Smith, but my friends call me Soapy. A sense of civic responsibility, my friend. I owe it to my fellow Americans to offer my leadership abilities here. I'm a particularly skilled organizer and problem solver. In boom towns like this, it's hard to know who to trust. But you can always trust Soapy Smith. I would recommend resting here in Skagway for a few days before you head for Dawson. While you're here, you might want to pass the time with a friendly game of Find the Nugget. What? This is an outrage! I shall find the scoundrel who cheated you and see to it that your money is returned. Wait right here! This is Dai. Hey, you look like you're headed for the Klondike. I just came from there. I'm Gold Dust Charlie. I've got twenty thousand dollars in gold, and I'm headed to the outside to celebrate in style. Well, since I've already staked my claim, I don't mind telling you. It was on Bonanza Creek at eleven above. That's a mining term. That means 11 sites about the original claim on a particular creek. I came over the Chilcut Trail. I'm not carrying much more than my gold, so it was pretty easy. Well, I'm afraid it might be slim pickings. The gold was discovered last summer, you know. Sourdoughs like me who are already on the Klondike stake most of the good claims right away. And no, I wouldn't say that. Your odds of striking the rich are pretty low. But there's always a chance you'll get lucky. Get to Dawson as fast as you can and try to stake a claim near where other miners have had success. Sorry, I've already been hired out. I am of the Chilkut Division of the Clinkett people. We are native to this area. I am hiring myself out as a packer. I carry people's supplies over the Chilkut Trail. Yes, we control all of the packing that is done over the trail. Also, the name of this trading post, Dai, is a Chilkut word that means to pack. 
or to load. In some places the trail is too steep, even for a sled. Many stampeders are not strong enough to carry a heavy load on their backs. We Chilkut have been doing it all our lives. The weather is bad, bitter cold, howling winds, never-ending snowstorms. Also, the Canadian Mounties demand that you have a year's worth of food and supplies. You must make at least 20 trips from here to the summit and back. I'm sorry, I am already working for other people. You should have been here sooner. Why didn't you say so? I will carry your supplies for $3,000. The best advice would be to hire a packer. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any available. Hello, friend. My name's Eddie the Shopner. I'm a different kind of stampede. I'm carrying gold into the Klondike. Well, I'm not going to dig gold out of the ground. I'm carrying gold into the Klondike. I reckon that, come spring, there will be thousands of picks, knives, and axes that need sharpening. I intend to be the only person in Dawson with a grindstone. Woe is me. I'm stranded here with no money and no way home. Well, I was a stampeder like yourself, but I was robbed of everything I owned. I stopped in for a little refreshment at the saloon in Skagway. A friendly looking fella asked me if I wanted to step out back and look at a bald eagle. Sure, I said. It was a setup. There was no eagle. Two men appeared out of nowhere. They beat me up and took all my money. And when I staggered back out to the street, my outfit had been stolen. I reported the crime to the man in charge of Skagway. He called himself Jefferson Randolph Smith. He said he was outraged and he promised to help me. Nothing. I later learned that Jefferson Randolph Smith is better known as Soapy. It turns out he's the leader of the gang of outlaws there. So I left Skagway. Now I'm just trying to get home. Stay out of Skagway. And from what I've seen, Dai isn't much better. If I were you, I would trust no one, and I would get out of town as soon as you can. Should we start on the White Pass Trail now? Well, if that don't take the cake. Somebody's run off with a pile of our food. We'd better check our supplies to see how much we got left. Well, if that don't take the cake, somebody's run off with a pile of our food. Well, if that...
Ah, I tripped over that rock. I gotta watch where I'm going. Well, if that don't take... We've arrived in White Pass. I hope you have better luck than I did. After what I've been through, I hardly remember my own name anymore. It's been one disaster after another. I set off from sheep camp a couple of weeks ago with three months worth of food and supplies, which I figured would be more than enough to get me to Dawson. Everything. First off, I didn't realize how hard it is to carry supplies over the mountains. I never worked so hard in my life. And when I was about halfway to the summit, I got caught in a blizzard. The only thing I could do, wait. It didn't stop snowing for 10 days. When I finally got to the summit, the Mounties wouldn't let me pass. They require everyone to have a full year's worth of food and supplies. I really don't know. I'm broke. I can't afford to buy more supplies, and I can't afford a ticket home either. Yeah, turn yourself around and go home. Howdy. You look like you're heading to the Klondike. I just came from there. Folks call me Flapjack. I struck it rich in the Klondike. Actually, I didn't find any gold. I made a fortune off of other people who found gold. Well, I was in the Klondike when the big strike was made, but I was laid up with a bum leg. Well, I couldn't go out prospecting, so I stayed in Dawson and opened a little restaurant. I made a fortune selling home-cooked meals to hungry miners. I came over the White Pass Trail. There sure were a lot of people going up as I was coming down. Things are quite a bit different now from what they used to be. Before the strike, there was only a few of us miners in the Klondike. We all looked out for each other. Now the whole area's crawling with greenhorns, and they all just seem to be looking out for themselves. Are you headed up the White Pass? Be prepared for the worst. My husband and I are trying to find a way back home. All but one of our horses are dead. We have no money. We thought it would be so easy. When we got to Skagway, we bought four horses for $800 a piece. We figured they would make it easy for us to pack our supplies over the mountains. Normally, the trail would be good for pack animals, but with so many thousands of people and animals tramping over the trail, it became a sea of mud and rocks. Then, to make things worse, it snowed for six straight days. Unfortunately, we did what everyone else was doing. We pushed our horses past the breaking point. We literally worked them to death. We couldn't carry our supplies without horses, so we had to abandon everything. We're going to have to try to find some odd jobs in Skagway or Dai to earn our passage home. It's lucky you're on foot. The trail is impassable for animals. Should we start on the Chilkoot Trail now? Oh. Ouch! That sharp rock put a nasty gash in your leg. We better stop and bandage it up.
I fell down and hurt my leg. I need to stop and take care of it. What bum luck? There's a rock slide blocking the trail. We'll be delayed at least a day. I'm not usually scared off by a little weather, but this blizzard is too much. We'll have to stop and wait for it to blow over. We made it to sheep camp. Looking for an easy way to get your supplies to the summit? You'll save yourself a lot of trouble by using my tramway. Archie Burns is my name and transportation is my game. For a modest fee, I'll get your supplies to the summit with my tramway. Your supplies will be waiting for you when you get to the top. It's a long rope wrapped around a big wheel with a horse tied to the wheel. I hit your supplies to the rope, the horse walks around the wheel, and presto! Your supplies go to the top of the mountain, and it's only a hundred dollars. I'd rather save our money for when we get to Dawson. I don't think it will be very hard to carry our supplies ourselves. There's still time to place a bet on the race. I say I've got the fastest dog sled team in the north. That feller over there thinks his team is faster. We're having a race to settle the matter. That's fine with me. Stand back, we're fixing to get underway. Well, that's the race. Hope you enjoyed it. Should we start on the trail now? Well, if that don't take the kick. Ouch! That sharp rock put a nasty gash in your leg. We better stop and bandage it up. Welcome to Canada. Okay, you're next. The Northwest Mounted Police, at your service. You have arrived at the border between the United States District of Alaska and the Northwest Territories of Canada. There's a shortage of food in Dawson. We're here to make sure that you and your partner are bringing enough for yourselves. We're also collecting an import tax. You must pay a tax to bring American goods into Canada. My men have taken inventory of your food and supplies. You have enough. Now all you need to do is pay the import tax. That will be $100, please. I'm not usually scared off by a little w
The trail ahead is jammed with people, and nobody's moving. It looks like we'll be stuck here for at least a day. I'm not usually scared off by a little weather, but this blizzard is too much. We'll have to stop and wait for it to blow. A mule train up ahead is blocking the trail. We'll be backed up for at least a day. What bum luck! There's a rock slide blocking the trail. We'll be delayed at least a day. Ouch! Looks like you twisted your ankle pretty good. You want to stop and rest it a day or two? I'm not usually scared off by a little... Well, if that don't take... Oh. Ouch! Looks like you twisted... The trail ahead is jammed with people, and nobody's moving. It looks like we'll be stuck here. Welcome to Lake Bennett. You will be here until spring. While you are waiting, you will need to build a boat. I am Sam Steele of the Northwest Mounted Police. I'm here to make sure that all persons remain here safely until spring. In Canada, you will find none of the lawlessness that exists in the Alaskan towns. My men and I resolve disputes among Klondikers. We are also recording the name and home address of every single person. More than 7,000 so far. In case of an accident, we want to be able to inform the next of kin. From here to Dawson City, it is lakes and rivers all the way. You must wait for the ice to melt. You should be aware that there are some dangerous rapids, especially at Miles Canyon. It is a deep and dangerous gorge. It has sheer cliffs of granite, which no one can climb, and a very strong current. In Miles Canyon, you must be sure to stay in the middle of the river. Most of the time you will stay in your tent to keep warm. You will also need to build a sturdy boat. Then, when the lakes and rivers are clear of ice, you can sail to Dawson. I do not expect the spring thaw until mid to late May. This far north, winter lasts a very long time. Most from here to Dawson City, it is lakes and rivers. Most you will need some logs and a whip saw. When you have those, you will need to look at the boat plans on the sign by the lake. You're in luck. A couple of stampeders ended their partnership over an argument about who had to be at the bottom end of the whip saw. You can use the logs that they left by the lake. Two angels could not use a whip saw without getting into a fight. It takes two people to work it. 
The one on top pulls up, the one on the bottom pulls down and does the cutting. You're in two angels could not use a whip saw. You have to put a chalk line on the top and bottom of the log, and both people must cut exactly along their line. But you can't see what your partner is doing, so something is sure to go wrong. Both partners will swear it was the other one's fault. You're in luck. A couple of stampeders ended their partnership over an argument about who had to be at the bottom end of the whipsaw. You can use the logs that they left by the lake. Two, you have to put a chalk. Hello, neighbor. I am from New Zealand. I have traveled many thousands of miles in hopes of striking it rich. Word of the Klondike Gold Strike has spread around the world, even to my home in the South Pacific. Just like everyone else who is here, I want to find gold. By ship, of course. I have been talking to people about how to navigate the river. From what I hear, the White Horse Rapids are very dangerous. To be safe, you need to stay in the channel on the right. Dr. Luella Day. Before I set out for the Klondike, I was practicing medicine in Chicago. I had been working in a hospital for three years. I needed a rest. One day, my secretary suggested that I go to the Klondike. Immediately, I said yes, I will go to the Klondike. I will attend the sick and I will make a fortune. From Chicago, I went to San Francisco. There, I met up with four gentlemen. They agreed to help me get to the Klondike if I would provide medical services to them. We took a steamship to Victoria, British Columbia. From there, we were scheduled to take the steamer Clara Nevada, which is returning from Alaska with a cargo of gold and lucky miners. We never saw her. She was last at sea with all on board and with her load of treasure. We finally took another ship. We encountered terrible weather. We ran out of food and water. We were lucky to survive. Thank you. His name is Prince Napoleon. I bought him a few weeks ago from a stampeder who was down on his luck. Then I bought a willow basket sled and a harness. Napoleon delights in pulling me around. Getting here to Lake Bennett has been very strenuous. I would recommend that you rest and relax now to restore your health. When the ice goes out of the lake, you can sail down the Yukon River to Dawson City. There are some wide spots, lakes really, and some dangerous rapids. I talked to an old sourdough who told me about the Five Finger Rapids. He said the safest route through there is along the right bank. There are some wide Spring is here. The ice is broken up. My men have examined your boat and pronounced it fit. You are among the first to arrive at Lake Bennett. Therefore, you may depart today.
We made it to Dawson. Hello. Would you like to hear the story of the big strike? I'm Skookum Jim. Along with my friend George Carmack and my sister Kate, I made the gold discovery that started the stampede. We were at Rabbit Creek, fishing and cutting trees to sell for timber. A few days earlier, I had done some pan in there and got some nice color. I'd shot a moose. After dressing it out, I went to wash up some pans in the creek. Next thing I knew, one of the pans had four dollars worth of gold in it. I'm going to the outside, Seattle maybe, and live like a king. It means strong. I got the nickname when I carried a load of 156 pounds over the Chilquick Pass. No one had ever carried such a heavy load. I'm also known as the best hunter and trapper on the Yukon River. There were already a lot of sourdoughs in the Yukon when I made the big strike. They got the good claims long before you got here. No. The Yukon is a big place. The more you explore, the better chance you'll have. Remember, all the good claims are right along the stream beds. Hi, Chichaco. Welcome to Dawson City. I'm George Carmack. I found the gold that started the gold rush. The date was August 16th, 1896. Now I'm one of the richest men in Dawson City. I came up here from California about 20 years ago. I wasn't looking for gold. I was just a fisherman who liked the wide open spaces. Before the gold rush, the Klondike River was known as the best salmon stream in the Yukon. <laughs> One day I had a dream that there was some really good fishing on a particular stretch of the Klondike. So I went there with my wife and some friends. We ran into a man named Henderson. He told me he had made a strike nearby. Oh, Henderson said something that insulted me. He invited me to file a claim next to his, but he said that he didn't want to share the fine with any of my friends. My wife and friends are Indian, and I guess Henderson didn't like that. Anyway, we moved on a ways and did some prospecting on another stream. It was called Rabbit Creek at the time, but it came to be known as Bonanza. Yes. As I was walking along the creek, I noticed a nugget the size of my thumb. I felt as if I had just dealt myself a royal flush in the game of life, and the whole world was the jackpot! <laughs> well, I told a lot of other folks that they should stake a claim near mine, but somehow I forgot to tell Henderson. <laughs> His own claim was very good, but it was nothing like mine. I think my wife Kate and I might go outside to Seattle and celebrate a little. Oh, that's just a friendly term that we sourdoughs use to describe stampeders like yourself. <laughs> it's an Indian word that means newcomer. Sourdough is a nickname for miners who have been here a long time. It refers to the way we make bread. We use fermented dough instead of yeast. With all the folks who are here now, it's hard to find a good new claim. Your best bet is to get a claim that's as close as possible to where other folks have found gold. Well, the claim I made is on Bonanza Creek. Be sure to stay as close as you can to the creek bed, and whatever you do, stay away from Chichaco Hill. <laughs> it's high above the creek bed. Any sourdough can tell you that gold sinks down into the creeks. It never rises up into the hills. Only an ignorant Chichaco would waste time digging up a hillside. <laughs> Hello. My name is Kate Carmack. I was with my husband George and my brother Skookum Jim when they made the gold discovery that started the stampede. 
I am of the Tagish people. This is our homeland. We have been here forever. Well, the answer depends on who you talk to. Each man claims to have made the discovery himself, but who cares? We all have plenty of gold now. I have heard much about the outside. I want to go see it for myself. You'll probably need to travel several miles from Dawson to find a place to prospect. Make sure you take along plenty of food. Hello, friend. My name is Jack London. I'm a miner, like most everyone else, and I'm also a writer. I was drawn here by the prospect of striking it rich, of course. I packed over the Chilkoot Trail and arrived here last October. Most of the land had been claimed by the time I got here. I was able to stake a claim on Henderson Creek, a few miles outside of Dawson. It was winter by then, so I couldn't do any mining. My partners and I hibernated in our cabin until spring. I was drawn here by the prospect of striking it rich, of course. I packed over the Chilkoot Trail and arrived here last October. Most of the land had been claimed by the time I got here. I was able to stake a claim on Henderson Creek, a few miles outside of Dawson. It was winter by then, so I couldn't do any mining. My partners and I hibernated in our cabin until spring. No, not yet. As luck would have it, I came down with scurvy. That's a common illness for miners like me whose entire diet consists of the three B's. Bread, bacon, and beans. My scurvy is bad. I need to get treatment on the outside. Some friends and I are going to float down the Yukon to St. Michael and return to California. Well, my friend, there are riches all around you. Not all of them glitter like gold. Live life to the fullest, and you will die a millionaire. As for myself, I plan to write a book about all the marvelous experiences I've had here. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Dawson. My name's Nellie Cashman. I've been traveling from one mining camp to another most of my life. I prefer life up north to the so-called civilized world. It takes the solitude of frozen nights with the howl of dogs for company and the glistening days when nature reaches out and loves you to bring out the soul of folks. I prefer life. I have a restaurant here in town. Folks call it the Prospector's Haven of Retreat. I've also bought a few claims and I help raise money for the local hospital. I've had some trouble with that myself. I bought a claim for $1,500, and then a surveyor came along and told me the land belonged to someone else. So my advice would be to make sure you get a rightful claim. Welcome to Dawson City, my friend. I'm Belinda Marooney. I own this restaurant and I have just opened the luxurious Fairview Hotel. I was working on a ship that had ports of call on the coast of Alaska. I heard about the gold strike in the spring of 1897, several months before word reached the outside. I sold everything I owned and bought hot water bottles and cotton goods. Then I came up to Dawson and sold out at a 600% profit. I used that money to open my restaurant. 
I built houses for the Stampeders. When I arrived in Dawson, there was no place for the newcomers to stay, and lumber was scarce as hen's teeth. How are we going to shelter those people, I said. I started buying up all the small boats and rafts that were arriving, hired a crew of young fellows, and had them build cabins. I wasn't thinking of the money I'd make. We just had to shelter people, like you. I need to get the finest possible furnishings for the Fairview Hotel. I'm having chandeliers and brass beds hauled in over the Chilcot Trail. After that, who knows? I shall think of something else to provide for the Stampeders. I look for claims in a roundabout way. I listen in on conversations of miners in my hotel and restaurant. When I hear of a good claim, I buy it. Of course, a good claim costs several thousand dollars. Welcome to Dawson City, my friend. I'm Cad Wilson, the highest paid entertainer west of the Mississippi. This is where the action is. In addition, I know and love the Yukon. I came over the Chilkoot Pass in 1894 on a photographic expedition. I've written some essays about how the gold rush has changed the area. This is where I sing, I dance, and I generally charm the gold right out of miners' pockets. Hello, neighbor. My name's One-Eyed Jack. How about a friendly game of cards? I'm dealing a game called Yukon. I'll deal five cards to us both, then I'll play a card, then you play a card of the same suit. High card wins. After each trick, we both draw another card from the deck. It's a card game, isn't it? We can play for 10 cents a point or 50 cents a point. In this town, that's a fair question. We'll let your partner be the judge. Your partner can watch both hands to make sure we both play by the rules. Hello, neighbor. My name is Lucille Hunter. This is my husband, Charles, and our baby, Teslin. We came over the Stikeen Trail. It's an all-Canadian route. We boarded a ship in Vancouver and came north to the Stikeen River, about 200 miles southeast of Skagway and Dai. The river was frozen already, so we dragged our sleds over the ice to the little town of Glenora. We had been told that there would be trains and steamboats to take us to Dawson, but that was not true. We had to pull our sleds hundreds of miles over rough terrain in the middle of winter. We were lucky to make it to Dawson alive. We arrived here in February, several months before most of the Stampeders. As a result, we were able to locate a claim on Bonanza Creek. It looks promising, so we are going to stay and work the claim. She was born along the trail. We named her Teslin, after the lake of that name. We spent Christmas there before pushing on to Dawson. Hello, friend. You look like a real sharpshooter. How would you like to try your hand at a little game of skill? I've put some targets on conveyor belts. When I set the belts to moving, you shoot as many targets as you can. You get 25 bullets. You get 25 points for hitting a plate, 50 points for a big bottle, and 100 points for a small bottle. You need exactly 1,000 points to win.
a mere five dollars. A drop in the bucket for a well-to-do stampeder such as yourself. If you get exactly 1,000 points, I will tell you where to find the best gold mining spot in the Yukon. I'll be honest with you. Gold mining is back-breaking work. It's a lot easier to sit here and collect $5 a piece from hundreds of stampeders like you. This arcade is my gold mine. Not a single one, and that's the truth. I purposely made it very difficult to win this game, but it's not impossible, and if you do win, you will be richly rewarded. Sorry, friend. You didn't get exactly 1,000 points. Would you like to try again? Now, true to my word, I'm going to tell you where the gold is. The old sourdoughs will think you're crazy for digging there, but it's in the hills above the west bank of El Dorado Creek. The old sourdoughs think all the gold is near the stream beds. They figure that gold is heavy, so it must work its way down into the streams. They can't believe that it could rise into the hills. There's an ancient stream bed buried in the hills. It's full of gold. What's been found in El Dorado Creek is merely what sunk down from the original source of the gold. Good day. Welcome to the Dawson Photograph Studio. We have pictures from all along the Yukon Trail. Feel free to look around. keeping a journal, would you? I'm looking for Klondike stories to sell to newspapers on the outside. I am indeed. I'll pay you $20 in gold. The only thing is, I would need to copy down everything you've written, and that takes time. 
Is it okay if I return your journal tomorrow? Great! Here's the gold. And I'll give you a newspaper, too. This here's the claim map. If you point out where you'd like to go, we'll head there straight away. Well, partner, this is the moment we've been waiting for. If this claim has some gold, we can stake it. If we don't find much, we can go looking somewhere else. So pick a spot and start digging. I can't believe it, partner. Look at all those pretty little nuggets. We struck it rich. Yes, sir. There's a little gold dust. Congratulations, friend. You're rich. Say, you wouldn't want to bankroll an old sourdough, would you? I heard rumor of a big strike over by Nome. 